Welcome back, guys. You ever played a game and as soon as you finish the credits, you've just hit the you start a new game button and started playing it all the way through again? If you haven't found a game like that and you're kind of curious of what people are talking about, this next list is for you. It's called Top 10 Replayable Games and it's full of games that you absolutely have to play more than once. At number 10 is The Binding of Isaac. With levels and boss fights that change each time you start a new game, The Binding of Isaac is a great game to play in quick bursts or extended periods. At number 9 is Deus Ex Human Revolution. The Deus Ex series has always given players the ability to choose how to handle the situation. Be that with stealth, brute force, or a mix of the two, Adam Jensen can be customized to handle any situation. I won't rest until I find the truth. At number 8 is The Secret of Monkey Island. This game is a point and click adventure like no other. The game focuses mainly on exploration and allows the player to pursue their quest to become a pirate without the possibility of dying. With so many things to do and people to meet, you've got to play this more than once. And number 7 is Borderlands 2. No matter how you like to play first person shooters, Borderlands 2 can cater to your playstyle. Be that sneaking around with a sniper rifle or introducing yourself with the business end of a shotgun. Character customization is a lot deeper than its predecessor, allowing you to change how a character plays as often as you reload your gun. The vault Jack's looking for isn't an alien prison. At number six is Dragon Age Origins. The interesting thing about Dragon Age Origins is the stories. Similar to Skyrim, the player has the ability to choose the race of their character, but the difference with Dragon Age is that whatever race you choose has its own origin story, giving the game a very unique narrative and adding way more replay value. And number 5 is The Sims. Much like SimCity, The Sims is a game where you create your own story, be that a romantic comedy or a reality show, perhaps a recreation of your own life, or an interactive sitcom. The Sims provide the tools and you create your own adventure. And number 4 is Skyrim. It's impossible to do every quest and meet every person in just one playthrough of Skyrim, as there are so many choices to make that change the game completely and permanently. The game also includes a very detailed character customizer, where you can choose your hair, features and even your race. And number 3 is Fallout 3. Like most RPGs, the character gets the ability to choose how their character looks, although Fallout did this slightly differently. In addition to this, you also get to choose your character's attributes as well. As the story progresses, the player makes decisions that change the outcome of the game, leading to multiple endings. And number two is Mass Effect 2. In this action RPG, the player takes on the role of Commander Shepard for the second time. The game takes the player's decisions from the first game and uses them to create events and narratives based on that, making every player's experience very unique. The number one replayable game is Heavy Rain. You can play Heavy Rain a whole number of different ways and get a different ending each time. Depending on who lives and who dies in a group of people you control, the story can change dramatically, making for a game that can be played over and over again. So that was top 10 replayable games. Guys, what did you think? I found that most of them were open world ones, which it's kind of a given, but I found that pretty interesting. With multiple endings and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, I really like the Borderlands 2 one because I've been playing it recently myself and because they have new classes even, like they have a Mecromancer, you can play as like a Psycho now. They're just like completely different styles of playing. They do a really good job at like, you know, the, the commando is going to be a lot different than, you know, the Mecromancer, which is I'm playing, so... Well, it's not only that, but it's also like within that class. Like at the moment, I'm playing as Zero, so he's very much a stealthy assassin guy. But very early on in the game, it's very much heavily focused on getting a shotgun and blasting to yeah. the base. So all of all of my skills that I've been skilling into have been, 
you know, critical hits and stuff like that, which can then be applied later on. I can then change it later on to go, oh, okay, now I use a sniper rifle. See, with games like that, with uh, like Skyrim and Fallout and all that kind of stuff, where you can build up your stats here and there and whatnot, I always have a hard time straying away from what I normally do, so it ends up being the same anyway. Yeah, Borderlands kind of just encourages you to just do whatever you want. Yeah. Like, it's, I love it. All right, now we have a WG101 on League of Legends. League of Legends is a third-person, top-down, multiplayer online battle arena game, also referred to as a MOBA. It is developed and published by Riot Games for the PC. It was announced in October 2007 and has been free-to-play since October 2008. Over the years, League has reached millions of players and has spread in popularity worldwide. In 2012, League of Legends was the most played online video game for the PC in Europe and North America. As of January 2014, more than 67 million players play per month, 27 per day, and over 7.5 million during its peak hours. The player is matched against other players or bots. Players meet up in lanes. There are three lanes, top, middle, and bottom. There is one champion in the top, one in the middle, and a duo in the bottom lane. The fifth member of the team of five is usually the jungler. Laners gain levels by killing the opposing team's champions, controlled by players, and also minions that regularly spawn and attack the other team and push towards their tower. The player earns gold passively for their champion, but gains more by killing minions, towers in the lane, neutral monsters and enemy champions. The jungler, on the other hand, can only gain gold and experience from neutral monsters and really gains experience from laners. His job is to help the laners win their lanes against their enemies, and after he is done, he leaves to help the rest of the team. Everyone uses gold to buy items to make the champions more powerful. The items can only be bought in the base or fountain. This is where the champions are summoned at the beginning of the game. Champions also spawn here after they die in battle and you can purchase while waiting for the spawn counter to expire. Items have a range of buffs for your champion, such as more attack damage or more ability power to destroy their enemies, or more armor, magic resist or health to withstand their enemies' attacks and defend their teammates. Typically, each champion has a skill set or natural stat that will direct you in what items you should buy. Some champions have only attack damage, therefore should build only attack damage items, while others damage increases with the more health they have. Each champion is different and knowing how to build your champion is one of the most valuable skills in the game. Consumables are also available in the shop. These include wards to grant sight in the focal ball or even potions to restore your health, mana or give you buffs for a certain amount of time. By pushing their lanes and defeating their enemies and minions in lane, players are able to push towards a tower and eventually destroy it. By destroying a tower, it gives their team gold in the laner to chance to roam the map and help out their teammates by helping them win their lanes. The first player to destroy the enemy's tower is considered the winner of the lane. These are buffed monsters, Ancient Golem and Lizard Elder, also known in short as Blue and Red. The blue grants mana regeneration and cooldown and the red grants health regeneration, more damage, and slows an attack. These monsters spawn early game and usually belong to the jungler. However, monsters that spawn later game become important objectives for buffs and gold. The dragon gives no player buffs, but grants the whole team gold. It is not easy to kill, but can be an important objective and can give your team an advantage in gold. The Baron Nasher arguably is the most important monster in the game. It is the strongest and most rewarded objective in the jungle. It has the most health and takes the longest to kill. But when slayed, he grants a buff that grants increased attack damage and ability power as well as a bonus to health and mana regeneration. Despite all the monsters and objectives, there is one only way to win the game. That is, by destroying the enemy team's nexus. This is the heart of their base, and by reaching it and destroying it, ensures victory. The way to reach the Nexus is to take down towers and inhibitors that protect it and win teamfights to push and prevail.